Yeah, I know many of you have been waiting for the part two of my reverse engineering Bluetooth video for way too long. And I'm sorry for this. If you didn't watch it yet, go now, watch the first part where I show how to reverse engineer a Bluetooth device by recording logs of the communication between the mobile app and the device itself and controlling for the Raspberry Pi with a Python script. In this part of the video, in the second part, I will show how I take the protocol I reverse engineer in the first one and create a Home Assistant integration with it that I can use in uh, scenes, automations and so on. Welcome and let's get started. Okay, so if you've been following my channel for a while, you know that I'm on a quest to try to automate as much of my office and my home as possible. And I do that with coding or electronics or whatever comes uh, to hand. Now that I know how the mobile app communicates with the Godox VL150 Lite, I can uh, take the protocol I reverse engineered and I can build a Home Assistant uh, integration for it and then put it in scenes and make my different remotes control that light as well. With the ultimate goal to use that animation to turn on my studio light and my on L light every time I use my webcam. So basically like when I come to a Zoom meeting with you, I look this nice, right? It's cool, huh? Anyway, the first step is to take Raspberry Pi and for this exercise, I'm gonna take a clean Raspberry Pi, but you definitely do not have to. And uh, basic knowledge of Python is definitely recommended for that video. I'm not gonna go too deep into the code, but I will go into the protocol quite a bit and I will show you how to work with the code on the Raspberry Pi. Okay, first I'm gonna flash uh, the Raspberry Pi with Home Assistant. You probably already have Home Assistant flashed, but if you don't, check out the video linked in the description of how to set up Home Assistant in your home or office. Okay, once Home Assistant have launched, what we do is we install Visual Studio Code. Uh, there's a version of Visual Studio Code that can run on Home Assistant itself, and then you can do all your coding without leaving Home Assistant uh, at all. So, first we need to enable uh, advanced mode. We do that by going to your profile and enabling here advanced mode. After that, you go to add-ons and you click on to do your server code. Install. This can take a few minutes. Okay, now that it's started, we don't want it to start on boot every time, but we do want to show it in the uh, cyber. Now, start it. It will take it a few seconds to launch. And now we can go to Visual Studio Code. The first step to create custom integrations is you create a new folder in the config and you call it custom components. Inside custom components, we're gonna create the component we're actually gonna be using, which is Godox. Now each uh, Home Assistant integration at the bare minimum needs to have two files. The first file is underscore underscore init underscore underscore dot py. And the only thing we do here is basically give a description to our component. And we do that by marking three quarters and then the name of the component. So the second part is a manifest. Basically what a manifest does is explains to Home Assistant how to treat that component. We give that component a domain, which basically just means how it will be named inside the Home Assistant ecosystem. A name, which is basically like how it will appear in Home Assistant, basically user-readable, a human-readable name. Then the next part is very important. We define the requirement. The requirement basically tells Home Assistant what Python components to install when launching that um, component. If you watched the previous video, you saw that in the uh, Python script, 
we built for communicating with the light. We use the library Blick and CLC Check. So those are the, the libraries that we list here. Instead of installing them through the command line, we tell Home Assistant to install them. Next, we tell uh, Home Assistant how to treat the state of that component. What IoT class assume state basically means is that this component has no way to know the actual state of the device. And so it will just assume the state of the device. So if you turn it on, it will internally mark it as turned on. Not optimal, but not every device you can actually know its state. And in this case, the Godox VL150 Lite does not report the state to us. And next is the version, which is just an internal version for the component. Once we have the manifest and the initialization ready, the next part of uh, every component is basically the integration itself. And the uh, Home Assistant have a few different so-called platforms, uh, such as lights, switches, um, HVAC systems, sensors, and so on. And in this case, we're gonna be creating light. So we name the Python file of the integration with the name of the uh, platform we're going to be using. So in this case, this is a light. So we create light.py. But before we can actually use or write code for this light, we need the actual library we built for that light. So I'm going to just copy paste the test script we built before. I'm going to call it Godot. So here we have all the functions to control that light. Keep in mind that it needs the MAC address of the light, basically the Bluetooth address, in order to actually communicate with it. So let's start using it from the light py. First, we add all the headers to include Home Assistant system for light support. Next, we define the scheme of the configuration of that platform of the light. In this case, we're gonna have two different uh, parameters. One is the MAC address of the uh, light and the second one is an optional name we give to that light and you'll see later how in the setup function we use those variables next we set the light up so we set up the platform we get the light from the configuration which basically will come from configuration.yaml and then add entity basically adds that entity the new entity we just defined to Home Assistant itself. So Home Assistant is gonna be aware that entity exists. Next, we define the Godot Light function class itself. And uh, here I define all kinds of like basic getters, like uh, the name of the light, brightness that returns from the class itself. And next we need to tell Home Assistant what features does that uh, entity support. In this case, that light supports only brightness. It doesn't support color. And that's what we're going to be defining. So supported features, return, support brightness. Support brightness, we defined here in the top. We define a property, is the light on? And as I said before, in this case, it just keeps the state of the light internally, doesn't query the light. Okay. We add the functions turn on and turn off. And turn on also accepts brightness. Uh, we call the turn on and set brightness functions from the Godot library that we just copy pasted or just wrote before. And uh, uh, turn off just turns the light off. The next function is update and that would be actually the place if the, the device you're trying to implement supports updates or okay, you can query its state, that's exactly where you would do that. After all of that is done, in uh, inside Home Assistant, we we'll go to Settings, System, and Restart. After the restart, we go to the Home Assistant configuration itself, so configuration, and we add the new platform we just created, or the new integration, into Home Assistant itself. Basically, we say that we're adding a new light. Platform Godot, as we said before. We give it a name and we give the MAC address of the light. Now in the scope of this video, I'm showing a very basic, very simple component. 
which comes with manual configuration. But definitely uh, you could expand on that and make automatic setup wizard with automatic steps because in the, <laughs> who the heck wants to uh, put all in that configuration manually. And after it was added, we'll start once more. So again, settings, system, restart. And after the second start, we see here that light in the dashboard, they go the light and we can turn it off and on. And we can even adjust its brightness. The cool thing is that now that light can even be used in uh, scenes. So we can go to settings, scenes and create a new scene. Add an entity and we can define how bright that light would be as part of that scene. If I go here, the light is on, I activate that scene and it's off. Back on. You can basically use it anywhere you would use a regular light. It's that easy. That's it. I hope you enjoyed that video and uh, if you did, press like. If you didn't, leave me a comment and tell me why you didn't. I'm always looking for new ideas of what to talk about in my videos. If you enjoy the geeky stuff in life, such as home automation, 3D printing, electronics, photography, videography, and anything that is kind of geeky, you came to the right place. Please subscribe and see you in the next one. Bye.